The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place. With live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions. With exclusive access. This is your ticket to the NCAA tournament. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. Welcome back to the First United Bank Center in Canyon, Texas, on the campus of West Texas A&M University, quarterfinal number three of the South Central Region Men's Basketball Championship. This will feature the number one seed and host team, West Texas A&M, against eighth-seeded Texas A&M Kingsville. Two Lone Star Conference teams. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kent Johnson, along with Lucas Kinsey. Glad to be here. Love March basketball, and we've had some good games thus far. To open our afternoon, Black Hill State knocked off third-seeded Colorado Mesa, 68-48. to And our most recent game, number two seed, Fort Lewis, showed their strength, defeating Lubbock Christian, 97-65. to Now we've got West Texas State. The Buffaloes landed the top seed for the South Central Region after winning their sixth consecutive Lone Star Conference postseason championship. They've won 11 in a row, 17 of their last 18, and they feature three first-team All-LSC all LSC honorees, including the man you see here, Julius Brown. He was the LSC preseason player of the year. He was the LSC player of the year, and he was also nominated to the LSC championship team. Julius Brown there, 16.7 points, three rebounds, three and a half assists a game, shooting almost 50% from the floor. He runs the show for the Buffaloes. Texas A&M Kingsville qualified for the men's regional tournament for the second consecutive season, marking the first time in school history that they've gone to postseason play in back-to-back -back campaigns. Ninth year head coach Johnny Estelle guided his alma mater to an LSC East Division title this season, finishing the regular season with a record of 20 and 10. They are led by guard C.J. Smith, a junior from San Antonio, Texas. C.J. was a second team all LSC honoree, averaging 11.3 points, 1.8 rebounds, almost three assists a game. But Lucas Kenzie, this A&M Kingsville squad isn't exemplified by one player. They are a group of fighters and uh, they are a scrappy team, much like their head coach, Johnny Estelle. You're exactly right, Kent. Uh, the, the Kingsville Havelinas are gonna, they're gonna fight for 40 minutes and, and they do it with a lot of different players. C.J. Smith, one of those, Creighton Avery, Isaiah Payne, uh, they, they just they're very balanced uh, they have guys that it's not an individual it's a it's a collective team effort you know you look there at uh, head coach tom brown they, they have had some battles over the years tom brown and johnny estelle but of course tom brown in his ninth season at wt has done such a good job at the helm for the buffaloes ninth season 235 wins only 56 defeats four-time lsc coach of the year he was named co-coach of the year this year, along with Vinay Patel of Angelo State. A&M Kingsville, they're under the direction of Johnny Estelle, who's in his ninth year at his alma mater. He lives and dies with the blue and the yellow and has done an outstanding job of getting this A&M Kingsville basketball program back to relevance. They've done more than that, second consecutive season in the men's South Central Region Tournament. West Texas A&M, they're ranked 13th in this week's NABC Coaches Poll. They're the number one seed in the South Central Region. Texas A&M Kingsville, the number eight seed in the men's South Central Region. Let's meet the starting lineup for these two teams. First, the Havilinas, 21 and 11 overall. They finished 14 and eight in the Lone Star Conference. Fifth overall in the conference standings, first in the LSC East Division. They will start at one guard, C.J. Smith, 5'9", junior from San Antonio, Texas. Smith averages 11.3 points, 1.8 rebounds a game. Second guard, Dylan Gooding, a six-foot junior from Killeen, Texas. Gooding averages 9.7 points, 1.6 rebounds. He's a second team, all LSC performer. Third guard, Jake Majors. 
If you look in Webster's Dictionary and look up the word hustle, they're going to have a picture of Jake Majors, a 6'1 junior from Corpus Christi, Texas, 6.1 points, 2.6 rebounds. The fourth guard, Marcus Jones Green, a 6'3 sophomore from Cheneyville, Louisiana, averages 5.3 points, 3.4 rebounds. And the forward, Will Shire, 6'8 senior from Corpus Christi, averaging 5.1 points, 4.8 rebounds. For the Buffaloes, the familiar lineup. Point guard, Julius Brown, a 5'10 senior from Westerville, Ohio. Julius averages 16.7 points, three rebounds a game. The second guard, Cameron Bell, a 5'10 sophomore from Edmond, Oklahoma. Bell averages 1.6 points, 1.2 rebounds. The third guard, he had an outstanding LSC postseason tournament, Damian Thornton. 14 points, five and a half rebounds. Had 10 points, 13 boards against Angelo State in the LSC championship game. Addison Wallace is a 6'3 sophomore from Cleburne, Texas, averaging seven points, four rebounds a game. Rounding out the starting five, Larry Wise, 6'4 sophomore from Waxhachie, Texas, 14.9 points, 3.9 rebounds. He's been to the free throw line 106 times, knocked down 98 of them, 92% from the line. Our officials tonight, Ryan Hoover's the referee, Jerome Yancey, Darren Griffin are the umpires. And it's a much anticipated matchup. Looking forward to it, Lucas Kenzie. Yeah, and you know, again, the, even though the series is in favor of West Texas A&M, they've won the last five straight over Texas A&M Kingsville. You and I know this very well, Kent, as we've covered these games. They're all intense, and they're all pretty close. Four of the last five losses for Kingsville against the Buffaloes have been by fewer than 10 points. So uh, look for Kingsville to come out very aggressive. It's going to be tough for uh, the Havilinas, though, playing uh, against West Texas A&M. Buffaloes a lot of confidence as they have won 11 in a row, and they are a perfect 13-0 in this building. There you see Johnny Estelle, as we mentioned, his ninth year as head coach at his alma mater offensively. Kingsville will run the outside weave, try and open up a three or get it inside to Will Shayer. The Buffs, of course, you got an open shot, put it up. I, right. I, I loved it two weeks ago when we talked to uh, – Zach Tucson post game, and we asked him what his range was, and he says, if I'm open. The Javelinas clad in the royal blue with the yellow across the shoulder and around the waist. Javelinas in the numerals in yellow on the chest, outlined in white. The buffs in the white under armor with the maroon stripes across the shoulder. West Texas in the numerals in maroon across the chest. It's going to be Thornton jumping against Shire. We're about ready to get going. Postseason basketball from Canyon, Texas. Quarterfinal number three, West Texas A&M against Texas A&M. Kingsville and the Javelinas control the tip and will go from our right to our left here in the first half. Majors on the wing, guarded by Bell. Up top to Jones Green, back to Majors. Running the weave, here's C.J. Smith. Pull up from the elbow, no good. Brown tips it to Thornton. Here come the Buffaloes. West Texas averaging 83.6 points a game. They're allowing 73. The Javelinas averaging 72.9, allowing just 65 points a game. They can really clamp down defensively. Thornton loses the ball out of bounds turnover for West yeah. Texas A&M. Yeah, Kent, you saw Damian last weekend uh, in Frisco. Thought he was really special throughout the entire tournament, uh, not only offensively but defensively, distributing the ball, a complete player, as I would say. These teams met just once this season, that coming in Kingsville. I'm going to say last year, it was December 8th, the Buffaloes won 71-65. to Here's Gooding. Kicks it in the corner to Jones Green. Green drives into the paint, misses the short jumper. Thornton with the rebound. That's a good look for Kingsville. Here's a three in transition. Ooh. Larry Wise shoots up an air ball. Don't see that very often. Get it out of your system early. Here's a three. Left wing dropped in. Dylan Gooding 
Gets the Habs on the board first, and it's quickly 3-0 A&M Kingsville. Thornton drives in. He's going to be fouled. That's a good uh, basket over there for the Havilinas. You need a good start in this game. Johnny is still not happy because his help defense did not get there in time. As uh, we know, Damian Thornton quick off the dribble beats Shayer. You got to have that help defense. It's not there until it's too late. Shayer gets in the air and comes down with the arm across the body. His first, the team's first. Thornton at the line, shooting twice, 68% on the season. This is the first. Talking about Damian Thornton, he was named second team all region this week. His teammate Julius Brown, first team all region. And Damian Kent only one season here with the Buffaloes, transferring over from Southwestern Oklahoma State. Picked up LSC Newcomer of the Year honors. His second Newcomer of the Year honor as he was the Great American Conference Newcomer of the Year, his true freshman season. Thornton makes the second, makes it a 3-1. Havelina lead. Shayer on the block, kicks it outside to Gooding. Gooding back to Smith. Smith guarded by Brown, up top to Majors. Smith drives the lane, slips, that'll be a walk. Those are two really quick basketball players going against each other right there. That's a fun matchup, Juju against C.J. Smith. And so Kingsville, they're going to do that. They're going to attack off the dribble, try to beat you, get into the paint, and if the defense collapses, they'll be ready to shoot threes. That time they turn it over, though. 3-1 our score, two minutes into the contest. Texas A&M Kingsville on top. You know, the two teams that have won already today, Kent Black Hill State and then Fort Lewis College, both teams very low turnover numbers. And route is both games have been relatively low turnovers. Here's Wise, front three, and he got it. See, he got that air ball out of his system. That's what we're used to seeing. That's a nice three-point look there for Larry the Hooper. And the Buffs have their first lead of the game, but it doesn't last long as Shayer goes in and cleans up a gooding miss. And the halves go back up five to four. We've seen Shayer over the years. Kent, he's been with Kingsville for a while. Here's Wallace for three. And Addison did that over in Frisco in the semifinals of the LSC tournament. Talking about Shayer, though, uh, he's gotten stronger over the years. A big offensive rebound and a putback, but that's kind of his role now for the Javelinas. He was a slender, tall guy that would play outside, and now they've got him inside filling space and taking up oh. screens. And there's Jake Majors. Jake Majors. Hit the rim three times. Doom, 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 doom. Dropped in. And Majors, that was a two-pointer. Ties the game up at seven. Here's Cam Bell, tries the three, no good. Addison Wallace goes up against Shear for the rebound, and it's <laughs> going to be the Havelinas basketball. What we talked about uh, this coaching matchup, so to speak, with Tom Brown and Johnny Estelle, and they're both very fiery, passionate coaches. I'm getting a kick out of Johnny Estelle there. They get the stop defensively. The ball goes out of bounds, but he's yelling at one of the other players on the perimeter, you forgot to block out. You make sure you block out. Love the passion and intensity from Estelle. He lives and dies on every shot that his team makes. Here's Jones Green. You're going to see a lot of this right here. Can't dribble drive. Smith gets bumped. He's and then if there's a crease, if there's an opening, Try to knife in the paint. That foul is called against Zach Tucson. His first. First team foul against the Buffaloes. Non-shooting foul. Creighton Avery to inbound to the left of the Havelina's basket. Gets it into Gooding. Up top to Isaiah Payne. Here's Avery on the wing. Left side, Gooding, three, short. Oh, Ryan Holt had it, dropped yep. it out of bounds. Yeah, it did. It went right off of Holt's hands. That, that's a player for the Buffaloes that has really come on second half of the season. He's a shot blocker, garbage man underneath, inside. We've seen some uh, pretty fantastic dunks from Ryland as well. That time he needed to hang on to the ball. Payne drives on Tucson, can't get the ball to fall. Zach with the rebound. Here come the Buffaloes. Brown. Gives it to Tucson. Had the game winner in the championship game of the postseason oh. tournament. Comes up short. Brown with a steal. A three won't go. Got to be careful on those outlet passes with Juju. 
Sammy Brooks with the defensive board, outlet to Avery. Holt tips the ball away, tries to keep it inbound, steps on the sideline, and that'll take us to our first timeout. 15-28 to play in the first. WT and a m Kingsville tied at seven. You're watching the NCAA South Central Region Men's Basketball Championship on NCAA.com. We're there to serve, make sure we're creating a fair atmosphere for both teams, upholding the integrity of the game. I chose to be an official. It's the best decision I've made. In life, things aren't scripted. Games aren't pre-scripted. You know, I got into officiating because my father was an official. Officiating was part of our family life. It wasn't just the game. You get to be outside, you get to like experience the game. It's so much more fun. You can get a lot out of it. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiating. It helped me become not only a better official, but a better person. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. And it's just been wonderful. Welcome back to Canyon, Texas, site of this weekend's Division II men's basketball South Central Region Tournament. Score right now 7-7 between two Lone Star Conference teams, Texas A&M Kingsville, Johnny Estelle's squad, a good start against number one seed West Texas A&M. And early in this game, neither team shooting great, 37.5% for Kingsville. Buffalo's just 33%, so good defense on both sides. Here's Avery, baseline or versus under, kicks it out to Brooks. Brooks from 16, misfires. Holt with the rebound for the Buffaloes. Here's Brown, working on Avery. Picks up his dribble. Holt, pump fake, drives in, stops from eight. Can't get the roll. And Holt working against a familiar face here at the First United Bank Center, Kavon Booker, former West Texas A&M player. Payne with the pull up and he got it. Payne, a 6'2 junior from Villa Platte, Louisiana. Mentioned Kevon Booker on the floor, 6'7 junior from San Antonio. It's a good look for Tucson. Couldn't get the three and good hustle from Holt to get that rebound and he draws a foul. I was wondering how Juju was going to find an open teammate. He went under the bucket on the baseline and was triple teamed, hanging in the air. And somehow he found Zach Tucson. Havelina is fortunate that Zach did not make that three-point try. Wise returns to the lineup for the Buffs. WT zero for the last five from the field. Scoring drought of 235. Here's Wise for three. Holt with the offensive board. Kicks it out to Larry. Brown up top. He'll drive in. Oof. Now comes back outside. Brown from 16, kicks it to Holt. Fakes the pass, his three short. Avalinas can't come up with the ball. Brown gets it underneath to Muhammad, who's going to be fouled. Wow. Buffalo's really struggling to make baskets, but Kent Bay are hustling and getting these offensive rebounds, getting some second chance opportunities. As the field goal drought continues, 0 for their last seven. Ahmed Muhammad at the line, shooting twice, 81% on the year, and he misses the first. Wow, missed them both. And the Havelina fans like that. 9-7, Havelina lead. Entry pass. Deflected by Holt, but his pass was picked off by Booker, and the Habs retained possession. They did not rule it a turnover, so no reset on the shot clock. Here's Payne with a pull-up, no good. Muhammad with the rebound. Outlet to Wise. Larry in the paint, puts it up. No, gets his own rebound, and he's fouled from behind. 
tried to get it outside to Brown, and Wiseman's worked over on that, that rebound. That was a difficult layup attempt there from Larry in transition. Look at this, Kent tries, just kind of ran out of room there, tried to scoop it up underneath. Gets the rebound, and then Isaiah Payne reaches in, is called for the foul. Oh, Zach Strip, good defensive play that time by Isaiah Payne. WT is 2 for 11 shooting right now from the field. Kingsville, 4 for 11. Here's Brown. Step back from 17, short. Muhammad fights for the rebound, but the Havilinas come up with it. I think right now WT, with the way the jump shots are not falling, they've got to find a way to drive this ball and attack the basket. Just like Speaking that. Of driving the ball, Creighton Avery. The halves go up four. 11-7. Wallace right wing to Brown. Tucson three, it rims out no good. Twelve and a half to play, first half. Buffs trailing 11 to seven. Here's Sammy Brooks with an off balance jumper, no good. Brown with the rebound. Buffs have numbers, Wise in the corner. Rebound comes down to the Havilinas. Oh, for their last 11. Julius comes in, steals the ball, incredible save. Wallace one-on-one -on -one at the other end, and he's going to be fouled, and yep. he'll go to the line. Arm, arm was stripped there, and a good take by Addison. At the defensive end, Julius Brown comes up with the save. Yeah. Incredibly, as he's falling out of bounds, he saves it back inbounds to his teammate, Addison Wallace, who goes the other way and draws the foul. The hustle and the effort right now, Kent, is what is keeping WT just at only four points away from Texas A&M Kingsville right now because, let's face it, the shots are not going. They're two of 14, the Buffaloes are, but defensively making some good plays. Addison and knocks down the first. You hear the crowd cheer to see that free throw go in. After our last game, Kent, that saw 63% shooting performance from the field by Fort Lewis College. And the next game here, we got two uh, Lone Star Conference teams that are duking it out, and it's two yards in a cloud of dust. Wallace's second shot. No good. Share kicks it outside to Gooding. Baseline drive, reverse, short. Thornton with the rebound. Campbell back outside to Thornton. Here's a three from Brock Meshack, no good. I've said it all year long, shooters shoot themselves out of slumps. Will Share underneath goes up for the lay-in. Now the recipe for Kingsville is perfect right now. The game being played at their pace, the Buffs are struggling to shoot the ball. And in the meantime, Kingsville is getting high percentage shots. They are attacking the basket. So that's why they lead right now 13 to eight. That takes us to a timeout at the 11-18 mark. You're watching the South Central Region Men's Basketball Championship on NCAA.com. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. 
It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. Welcome back to the First United Bank Center. 11 minutes, 18 seconds left here in first half action, and it's Texas A&M Kingsville leading by five with the basketball. The Buffs O of their last 13 from the floor. Here's Majors to Smith. Running the weave. Gooding drives on Wallace, puts it up. No, Meshack. Skies in, trying to get the rebound, tapped it out of bounds. 13-8, eight-seeded Texas A&M Kingsville on top. Controlling the tempo, fighting like they do game after game. Things going their way right now. There's a strong drive by C.J. Smith. Ball doesn't go, but he's going to draw the foul. Yeah, he blew past Cameron Bell there defensively and got that shot up quickly, drawing the foul. For Bell, that's his first. Here you see Smith going right by. Bell kind of gets him with the elbow as Smith elevated. CJ for the year, 73% from the line. Junior from San Antonio can't get the first. On the season, leading the team defensively with 37 steals. Also, the team high 2.6 assists per game. Misses them both. Thornton with the rebound, his fourth. Drives to the lane, puts it off the glass and in. Yeah, that, that's what WT needs right now. That outside shot's not going. Get it inside, get those points in the paint. First field goal in six minutes, 24 for the Buffaloes. And there's a turnover. Buffs pull it within three. Force a Texas A&M Kingsville turnover. Buffs now one of their last 14 from the field for the game, just three of 17. Here's Holt for three, knocked it down. <laughs> That time he was closer to the three-point line. His previous one that uh, did not go was a little too deep. That time, Ryland lined it up and knocked it down. And for all the bad that has befallen the Buffaloes, this is now a tie game. Jake Majors with a pull-up jumper. Yeah, a couple of good jump shots early in this game here for Jake Majors, junior from Corpus Christi. Pull up by Brown, knocks it down. <laughs> The buckets are open at both ends now. Yeah, that was Julius's first point scored tonight. Tied at 15, 940 to play in the first. You have to stay disciplined when you're guarding against this dribble drive. Eight Smith distributes left wing, three-pointer gooding, no good, out of bounds. Buffalo's basketball. Devon Booker returns to the lineup for the Havelinas, replacing Will Scher. You know, Texas A&M Kingsville, Kent, common opponents in the regional tournament. They lost to Colorado Mesa by just six. They lost to Lubbock Christian by just seven. And, of course, lost to the Buffaloes in a close one uh, this year by just six points. Thornton for a three. The Buffs have hit three in a row. Okay. That's caused Johnny Estelle to call a timeout. We'll take it with him. 9.05 to play in the first. Buffs on top, 18 to 15. Here you see it. Knock it down, Damian, just like that. You're watching the South Central Region Championship on NCAA.com. The NCAA sponsors 90 national championships each year, none of which could happen without officials. There is an urgent need for sports officials across the country as they are retiring four times faster than they are coming in, leaving shortages at all levels of sport. The NCAA recognizes the importance of officiating on the student athlete experience and is dedicated to the recruitment and retention of new officials for all sports. There are many great reasons to become an official. Stay in shape and get paid to do so. Meet new people and build relationships within a tight-knit community. 
All right, back to the action here. Buffalo's on a nice run lead, 18-15. They've made four of their last four. We'll see if the Havilinas can get back in it. Oh, nice feed, but Booker misses the dunk. Thornton with the rebound. Here we go the other way. Hello, Damian gets locked, the rebound, and the putback. You could tell he wanted that one badly. Missed the first shot, but got his rebound, went right back up to the basket. Here's Majors, pull up, can't get it to go. Another rebound for Thornton, number six. Yep. In the corner, Tucson, three, knock it down. It, it just took that ball going through the bucket once, and then it was contagious for the Buffs. Damian Thornton sparked it with the layup. And now the Buffs have now made four of their last five. It's a 12-2 run over the last 156. Booker inside. Can't get it to go. He heard footsteps. Holes, he wants in on the action. Here's Tucson, right wing, wide. Larry, backing down to the uh -huh. block. Turn around! <laughs> How do you defend it? Well, he's looking opposite. He's looking to the left side of the floor the whole time, peering, and then he knows I'm going to spin back opposite. That is a crafty veteran move there by Larry Wise. In the meantime, Kevon Booker and Rylan Holt are <laughs> wrestling there in the, the middle of the floor, and did they call a foul on the Ryland Buffaloes? Rylan gets called for the foul, his first, the team's third. 12-0 run for the Buffs over the last minute 56. 17-2 over the last 245. We're gonna take a timeout, you're watching. Buffalo basketball on NCAA.com. The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. This is your ticket to the NCAA tournament. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. What is a junction? It's an intersection, a connection of rivers and roads, ideas and opportunities, and of people. In Grand Junction at Colorado Mesa University, we live at these crossroads between today and tomorrow of academics and adventure because this is where it all comes together. The best minds, the best ideas, the best paths forward. They all start here at Colorado Mesa University. Welcome back to the first United Bank Center. There's some of the West Texas A&M Buff crowd checking out this game. Right now, WT leads 25-15 over Texas A&M Kingsville. Kent, it wasn't long ago where none of the shots were going in for the Buffaloes. All of a sudden, they're on a 17-2 run over the last 259. They misfired on 13 consecutive field goals, trailed 13-8. Now it's 25-15, almost a steal for Thornton. Stepped into the passing lane, just a step too slow. Shot clock at one. Smith gets the shot off, but misfires, and the Buffs get the rebound. And they're starting to get these rebounds and go. Transition game picking up. Picking up the tempo. Wise backs down. Mark Jones screen, but there's Ryland Holt with the follow and the tap in. I just love his energy. Ryland is always around the ball. Long three outside, missed by Gooding. Buffs with the rebound. Yeah, Kingsville was hitting everything. Oh, here's Zach Toussaint. Long that was a three, deep three. A too long. But the Havilinas, uh, oh, for their last five, one for their last seven. And the Buffs out rebounding the Havilinas 20 to 13 at this point. Inside of seven to play in the first. Buffs leading by 12 after trailing 13 to eight. Strong drive. Gooding misses. Every time the Havilinas go to the basket, there's two buffs riding them. But Creighton Avery answers with a three. Ends a 14-0 Buffalo run. Six minutes to play in the first. Brown in the paint, kicks it back outside to Thornton. Thornton thought about the three. 
Shot clock at nine. Here's Wise. To Brown, long three left wing, won't go. Rebound comes down to Marcus Jones-Green. That's a good defensive possession by the Javelinas. Avery to Gooding, to Booker. Back to Gooding. Oh. Here's Majors. <laughs> Kent, that, that was a car accident right there. I mean, it was Tucson and one of the Javelina players. Yeah, Dylan Gooding. Look at this. Let's we'll get the replay here. Who says basketball is not physical? Wham! It's going to be the Buffs basketball. Following the foul on Gooding, his first, the Javelinas sixth as a team. Thornton on the wing. Looking to drive, pulls up, puts up a shot, can't get it to go. Yeah, that was good defense by the Javelinas, Kendrick Washington. He was not going to allow Damian to get into the paint. Share with the rebound. Here's Allen Singleton with a pull up from 17. Wallace with the rebound. Buffs doing a good job on the defensive boards. Wallace, he'll put up a three, can't get it to go. Wise with the offensive board to Brown for three. That, that was the eighth offensive rebound by West Texas A&M, and you give the Buffaloes too many chances, eventually they're going to start making those shots, and that's exactly what Julius did there, splashing the three for the Buffs, their fifth, actually sixth of the half. Singleton drives in, left-hander, no. Scher with the rebound, and he's fouled. Yep. Good job there by Scher to control position, grab the rebound and force the foul on Larry Wise. Yep. His first, the team's fifth, Will Scher. Senior from Corpus Christi to the line, shooting twice. 71 for center on the year. Had a season high 19 points earlier this year against St. Edwards. Knocks down the first. He is one of four players on the roster from Corpus Christi. Yeah. Corpus, a mere 20, 25 miles from Kingsville. Kingsville inland. Corpus, of course, on the Gulf of Mexico. Cher makes them both. Cuts the Buffs lead to 11 at 30 to 19. Ahmed Muhammad kicks it back to Thornton, and we've got a walk. Yeah, Muhammad thought he had, had jump stop, you know, that power dribble, jump stop in the paint, but he shuffled his feet. And for the Buffaloes, that was the third turnover of the first half. Payne on the wing. Trying to get around Cam Bell, puts it off the glass, oh, wow. no. Excellent defense by Cameron. Nice rebound by Addison Wallace, <laughs> kind of a mess on the break. Brown in the paint, double team. Wallace on the left side, back outside the Thornton, shot clock at 10. Thornton oh. pushes off and yep. gets charged for the call. Gets called for the charge. Yeah, that was strong defense by C.J. Smith, the shorter player. And Damian gets that offhand up. Goes right into the chest. Good defense. This one hurt, too. 326 to play in the first. Buffaloes lead it 30 to 19. You're watching the NCAA South Central Region Men's Basketball Championship on NCAA.com. We're there to serve, make sure we're creating a fair atmosphere for both teams, upholding the integrity of the game. I chose to be an official. It's the best decision I've made. In life, things aren't scripted. Games aren't pre-scripted. You know, I got into officiating because my father was an official. Officiating was part of our family life. It wasn't just the game. You get to be outside, you get to like experience the game. It's so much more fun. You can get a lot out of it. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiating. It helped me become not only a better official, but a better person. It happens in every town, in every game, 
we never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. And it's just been wonderful. March Madness here in Canyon, Texas. The first United Bank Center. Our score, 30 to 19. The Buffaloes on top of Texas A&M Kingsville. Third game of the day. We've already seen Black Hill State and Fort Lewis College punch a ticket to round two with their first round wins today. Following this one, it'll be Angelo State and Colorado Mesa. A lot of really good teams on display here today. We talked about the bus shooting woes. The Havilene is just one of their last 11 from the floor. There's another misfire. Wise. Oh. Another charge. Yeah. Kingsville standing their ground defensively. And for Larry, is that his second? Second foul. Little out of control when they get in the paint. And there's a nice two-pointer for Payne. Isaiah Payne, yeah. His fourth point. This is a big stretch right here. You got 240 left before halftime. Buffs leading by nine, and Kingsville trying to get back in it. Oh, Julius Brown swallowed up. Ball goes out of bounds, no foul. Johnny Estelle wants a foul. Julius Brown says, I'm on the floor. Buffs basketball. Yeah. Julius goes up against two defenders. Good job. Not and it, That wasn't a foul. Washington stayed yeah. back, just went straight up. Julius to inbound to the left of the Buffs basket. This pass is picked off. Singleton crosses the timeline and slows it down. Buffs by 11, 30 to 20, or excuse me, by 9, 30 to 21. And that one just won't go. It rolls all around the rim and falls off. Here's Thornton. <laughs> Get the idea on that one. He was going to draw the foul, and the shot was secondary. Yes. Foul goes against Isaiah Payne, his second. Seventh foul against the Javelinas as a team. Thornton goes to the line. Shooting one and one. You mentioned it, Kent, the rebounds heavily in favor of WT right now. 27, now 28 to 18 advantage. And of those 28 rebounds, nine have been on the offensive glass for the Buffaloes. Thornton hits the first. Gives him nine points in the first half. To go with his nine rebounds. How about a double-double by halftime? We've seen some... Great performances already today. Oh, yeah. Second shot. Got it. In the first game, Black Hill State, that was more of a collective effort for them, both with their defense and their balanced scoring. The second game, how about a quell caught going for 31 points? And he did most of that damage in the first he half because he got to rest. Five at the half. Yeah. Played sparingly in the second half, and we can look forward to seeing him tomorrow at 5 o'clock when the Skyhawks take on Black Hill State. Here's Singleton, tries to drive on Tucson. Yeah. And we're going to have a foul call to the hook and roll. That's Jaron a, Griffin making the call. That's an old school move, Kent. That's the one you used to throw out at the YMCA. You get around the defense on the baseline and use that offhand. Try to get uh, around the defender, but the official saw it. That was a point of emphasis last season. Saw that call made numerously. Inside of two minutes to play, buffs up 32-21. Holt with a strong drive, kicks outside to Mashak for three. Knocked it down, Brock Mashak. It's a great shot by Brock. An incredible play for Ryland, though. He goes into the defense, head fake, gets three defenders up in the air, and that allows for a wide-open Brock Meshack to float over and hit the shot. And there's a steal. Holt just reached around Kavon Booker and took the ball away. Good positioning. To reach around, not be called for body contact. 
Approaching one minute to play in the half. Thornton outside. Kingsville switched to a zone matchup here. Here's Holt in the corner to Brown. That's how you beat the zone. And that's why not many teams play zone against the Buffaloes. Just a quick switch there for Johnny. Is still trying to throw WT off its game. And they got it to the high post. Rylan Holt makes another good assist. It just his confidence, Kent, as the season has gone on. Now, I know he had the ankle injury, uh, you know, mid at the midway point of the season. But Rylan Holt, both offensively and defensively, playing like a man possessed. Julius picks up his first personal. 8-0 run by the Buffs over the last minute 30. Earlier they had a 17-2 run over two and a half minutes. C.J. Smith at the line, shooting twice. He's 0 of 2 so far today. Knocks down the first. Yeah, for Kingsville, they have to have their guard score. Uh, and to this point in the first half, leading scorer is Will Shayer with six points. And the Havelina is shooting only 29% from the field. Second shot missed, Mashak with the defensive board. And we were focused on WT's poor shooting at the beginning of the game, Kent, but how about their defensive effort right now holding Kingsville to only 22 points? Tucson to Brown, shot clock at nine. Julius up top, drives underneath. And they're going to get Julius they with, got the him hook. with the hook. Yes. For Julius, that'll be his second. There will be no hooking tonight. 38-22 lead with just 15.9 seconds left. And, and even though it's still a lot of basketball to be played, oh, this yeah. possession is big for Kingsville. If they could get a bucket going into the locker room at halftime, give them some confidence. Buffs are going to try to get another stop. They've not hit a field goal in the last 2.38. Smith, four, three, goes around Wallace, no good. Wallace with the rebound, and that takes us to the half. Solid half by West Texas A&M sees the Buffaloes head into the halftime locker room, leading Texas A&M Kingsville 38 to 22. We'll take a timeout, come back with our halftime activities. You're watching the NCAA South Central Men's Basketball Championship on NCAA.com. These are the moments that live on, that we'll talk about for years to come. We come here to see history made, sharing in the wins and the upsets. Together, because whether we're players or fans, we're all on the same team. And to us, this is more than just a game. It's an important moment in our lives. One, One that's, that's worth protecting. protecting. So if you see something, say something. Report suspicious activity to your local authorities. The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. This is your ticket to the NCAA tournament. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. Number 32, Kyle Hornsby. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. The NCAA expresses our gratitude to our corporate champions and partners. Without their support, these great championship moments and opportunities are not possible for our student athletes. The NCAA's commitment to the highest levels of fairness and well-being along with the pursuit of excellence in both academics and athletics, helps build a championship culture. With their generosity, 
our corporate partners make it possible to celebrate champions. Thank you. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. It's halftime here in Canyon, Texas. The score was Texas A&M leading over Texas A&M Kingsville in a one versus eight matchup, 38 to 22. Lucas Kinsey with you alongside Kent Johnson. Hope you're enjoying today's round one and we've had Two games already in the books. This third one right now at halftime, and the statistics look like this. Buffalo's shooting a much higher percentage, 38 to 28% right now. The threes playing a big, big factor as WT has knocked down eight of 20. Kingsville's made only one. Another story that uh, I think has been big are the rebounds. West Texas A&M has 30 rebounds right now. Compare that to just 18 for the Javelinas. And it was a slow start for the Buffaloes. Again, Kingsville uh, had that lead early on, Kent, but uh, when the Buffaloes woke up and they went on that 17 to two run in less than three minutes, that, that ignited things a little bit. They were playing pretty solid defense from the beginning, but shots were just not falling. Once the shots did start falling, the defense still, you know, stayed pretty aggressive. You have some good performances at halftime from Damian Thornton, Julius Brown, and I think Rylan Holt has been huge off uh, the bench for the Buffalo. And, and, and Holt does things that you don't necessarily see in the box score now. As I look at it now, he has five rebounds, but his defensive positioning, his ability to just touch passes, deflect passes to his teammates, you don't get credit for that stuff, and he is constantly doing it. Yeah, Holt right now at halftime is credited with one steal, and there's the five rebounds. Three of those have yeah, been offensive. The uh, good, good production from him inside Addison Wallace as well. The plus minus for Holt is the same as Julius Brown, a plus 18. On the other side for Texas A&M Kingsville, uh, we we talked about in pregame that the guards, you know, kind of get things going for them. The scoring individually, six points for Will Shayer to lead the way, and then Jake Majors has hit a couple of buckets. He's got four. Craig Navery has four. Isaiah Payne has four. C.J. Smith has only scored one point, and he's their leading scorer at 11 points per game. For the Javelinas and Johnny Estelle, I, I think they have got to continue to be aggressive, find ways to score inside, uh, and also – for them, they need to try to find ways to get some second chance points, try to hit the glasses. They have not been able to do that in the first half. Don't count Texas A&M Kingsville no. out. It, 
in the uh, LSC semifinal game, or, or excuse me, quarterfinal game against St. Mary's. They trailed St. Mary's by double figures at the half, came back, forced the game into overtime, eventually winning 66 to 61. They don't give up, they scratch, they claw, they fight. They don't make it easy on you. For the Buffaloes, mentioned Damian Thornton, 10 points, nine rebounds at halftime. Uh, Julius Brown, eight points on three of seven shooting. Holtz, the five points, five rebounds, and also for Ryland, three assists. That's pretty impressive. Larry Wise has five points. Zach Toussaint with three. Brock Meshack with three. And that is the scoring for the Buffaloes. Our halftime score, 38-22. West Texas A&M leading over Texas A&M Kingsville. Round one of the Division II Men's South Central Region Basketball Championship here from the First United Bank Center. We'll take another timeout, come back, and we'll get you ready for second half action. You're watching the South Central Regional Tournament here on NCAA.com. We're there to serve, make sure we're creating a fair atmosphere for both teams, upholding the integrity of the game. I chose to be an official. It's the best decision I've made. In life, things aren't scripted. Games aren't pre-scripted. You know, I got into officiating because my father was an official. Officiating was part of our family life. It wasn't just the game. You get to be outside, you get to like experience the game. It's so much more fun. You can get a lot out of it. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiating. It helped me become not only a better official, but a better person. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. And it's just been wonderful. Being a champion takes more than skill more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. These are the moments that live on, that we'll talk about for years to come. We come here to see history made, sharing in the wins and the upsets. Together, because whether we're players or fans, we're all on the same team. And, and to us, us, this is more than just a game. It's an important moment in our lives, one, one that's, that's worth protecting. protecting. So if you see something, say something. Report suspicious activity to your local authorities. The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place. With live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions. With exclusive access. This is your ticket to the NCAA tournament. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. Number 32, Kyle Hornsby. Inside the 30. Touchdown. Michaela Burgess. An incredible finish by Hall. The NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. The NCAA expresses our gratitude to our corporate champions and partners. Without their support, these great championship moments and opportunities are not possible for our student athletes. The NCAA's commitment to the highest levels of fairness and well-being 
along with the pursuit of excellence in both academics and athletics, helps build a championship culture. With their generosity, our corporate partners make it possible to celebrate champions. Thank you. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. We're at halftime here at the First United Bank Center. Score 38-22. West Texas A&M leading over Texas A&M Kingsville by 16. Uh, so, Kent, we have seen already today Black Hill State take down Colorado School of Mines 68-48. That was a close game for one half. And then uh, the Yellow Jackets ran away from Colorado School of Mines in the second half. Our second game uh, was no contest, really, from the opening tip. Fort Lewis dominates in their win over Lubbock Christian, winning 90, uh, was it 95-63 over uh, the Shaps. 97-65. 97-65. And then uh, here, this one at halftime, a 16-point lead for WT. We still have one more to go, though. Oh, yeah. And that is number four seeded Angelo State against number five seed Colorado Mesa. And those are two really good opponents as well. So I mentioned that when we started our first broadcast, final NABC top 25 poll. These are the teams that are in the top 25 poll. Fort Lewis College, number seven. West Texas A&M, number 13. Colorado School of Mines, 14. Colorado Mesa, 20. Black Hill State, 21. And Angelo State at 23. Six schools that are all here competing for a regional championship out of uh, out of that top 25 ranking. So that tells you a little bit about the talent that is on display. Oh, it's, it's, it's loaded. And, you know, we talked about in our previous two games, we were seeing the previous three years Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference Players of the Year. We've got the Player of the Year from the Lone Star Conference on the floor for the Buffaloes tonight in Julius Brown. And uh, we've seen outstanding individual play. We're seeing outstanding team play. This, this, this is, is why you do it. And this is why we're excited to be here. Buffs to inbound the ball to start the second half. Campbell to inbound it to Julius in the backcourt. Buffs going from right to left as we start our second half of play. 38-22 West Texas. Wise, right wing to Wallace. Addison dribbles it out. They're trying to go down to Damian on the block, but he's being defended well right now by Jones Green. Shot clock at eight. Julius drives into the block and drags his pivot foot. This is the way we started the game. Yeah, this Kingsville team, they're known for their defense. They hold opponents to only 65 points per game. They're 18th in the country in turnovers forced. As they force 16 turnovers per contest. Buffaloes with eight. Here's a drive, pull up, and a short jumper knocked down by Gooding. He has five. Buffs lead cut to 14 at 38-24. Oh. oh, nice feed for the slam. We, we both saw that same thing, that bounce pass. Like, where's that ball going? Oh, there's Addison. But he leaned back as if he was going to do that little mid-range jumper instead of bounce pass to Wallace driving the baseline. Let's watch that one again. There's a foul on the other side against the Buffaloes. But here's Juju, drives, and Addison with the finish. 
And that is why, young players, you keep your head up all the time. Turnaround jumper, nicely done, C.J. Smith. It's a good start offensively for Kingsville, stroking the ball well. Six Buffaloes, Wallace baseline to Thornton. Brown, open three, knock it down, Juju. It's an under, underrated part of his game is his outside shooting. He's almost automatic in the mid-range. Here's Gooding on the wing. He'll pull up from 17, and he'll knock it down. So after the low scoring first half, Kent, now things picking up. Kingsville says, okay, we can't hang with the buffs playing it our way. Let's pick up the pace and play theirs. Thornton on the elbow, drives the lane, kicks outside to Wallace and is called for a charge. Yeah, he got out of, up in the air, out of control in Kingsville. We've seen them take three charges tonight. They're really good at that. That time it was Dylan Gooding that stood his ground. Second personal against Damian Thornton. Team's second of the half. And to the, the casual basketball fan, you say, you know, take the charge, get in there, be tough. But it, uh, it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> Easier said than done. Majors feet share inside. <laughs> He's hooked up with Addison Wallace. <laughs> You say, uh, Will Shayer, why didn't you use your left hand there? You were on the left side. Well, because Addison Wallace was holding it. And throw it inside. <laughs> Addison claiming that Shayer initiated the hold. What's well, the old dance that they were trying to do? The dozy do. That's right. And we're going to have. Drum roll, please. Our first video review of the day. That's pretty good. We've made it two and a half games. There's a look at head coach Tom Brown, who in his career is 13 and three all time against Texas A&M Kingsville. You know, what I'm going to guess here, Kent, is that they're looking to see is it some kind of an intentional foul because of the way that the arm was being held. Um, not flagrant, I, I wouldn't think, but could you say intentional, possibly? Jacob, can we go back and see that again? There we go. Yeah, watch the, the left arm is being held the whole time as Addison has turned looking toward the official. He's at the official <laughs> like it was, he, Addison's trying to play it, but Shayer was okay. doing the hook and roll okay. and had my arm pinned against his body. So there's the pick and roll, but that was maybe the hook and hook roll? Hook and roll. Okay. Pick and roll's the old <laughs> set your screen and roll off. Addison's kind of an innocent bystander that got his arm wrapped up, but it still may result in well, a foul. Let's find out. I've said a couple of times tonight, Kent, that's what you do in March. You go dancing, right? That was going to say two shots to Will Shayer. Will Shayer, Addison Wallace, may I have this dance? Actually, you may have two free throws, Will Shayer. Ryan Huber explains it to Tom Brown. Share a 71 percenter, two of two today. Knocks down the first. They'll have another shot coming. Makes them both. Eight points for Shayer. Came into tonight averaging 5.1 on the year. Shayer at a 13 point buff lead. He's a tough player, Kent, but he's also a smart kid. He's a mechanical engineering major at Texas A&M Kingsville. No, he's got a good future ahead of him. Here's Wise in the paint. Back to Brown. Drives Julius high off the glass, knock it down. Yeah, you say high off the glass, high enough to go over two taller Kingsville defenders. That was a sweet shot. 13 points for Juju. Buffs lead back up to 15, 17 to play here in the second. Majors, right wing, open, gooding. But before the shot, 
They're going to see Damian Thornton ran, get this, ran through a Will Shayer screen. That took some doing. Here's the replay. If you're going to do that, you deserve the foul. <laughs> you earned it. For Thornton, that's his third, and we'll send him to the bench. Fourth West Texas team foul of the half. Well, in the way that he has played tonight and then, you know, down the stretch of the season, you do not want to have Damian Thornton on your bench. Talk about going high. How about Isaiah Payne going over Addison Wallace for the lay-in? So with Damian on the bench, who's going to step up here for the buffs? Julia says, I'll take the shot. A little short. Coming in behind, Bell knocks the ball loose. Cher picks it up. Here's Avery. Right wing to Jones Green. Down low to Cher, double teamed. Kick it outside to Payne. Drives in, no one steps in, mm. and Payne misses it. That was a tough miss there for Kingsville. They get that one, they're only down by 11. Wallace. One. Yep, he hangs. I said, Wallace, let's make it wise. Yeah, Larry Wise hangs, absorbs the contact, eyes never leave the basket, and he's able to put it softly with a little kiss at the end. Marcus Watch. Jones Green with the foul, yep. his first. For Larry, he now has seven points. He'll try to make it eight. It's his first trip to the free throw line in the game. 92 percenter on the year. Rack it up. Only eight points for Larry. Buffs usually get to the free throw line a lot. Neither team has been there much tonight. There's a strong drive by Avery comes up for not. Yeah, Booker was fouled as he was grabbing that rebound. Ryland Holt ran right through him. And for Ryland, that's his second personal. That'll take us to immediate timeout. 15.56 to play. Buffs lead it 48 to 32. You're watching the NCAA South Central Men's Basketball Championship on NCAA.com. Number 32, Kyle Hornsby. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. The NCAA expresses our gratitude to our corporate champions and partners. Without their support, these great championship moments and opportunities are not possible for our student athletes. The NCAA's commitment to the highest levels of fairness and well-being along with the pursuit of excellence in both academics and athletics, helps build a championship culture. With their generosity, our corporate partners make it possible to celebrate champions. Thank you. Welcome back to the First United Bank Center. Texas A&M Kingsville head coach Johnny Estelle talking to the official as he sees his team right now trailing by 16 points, 15.56 to play in the second half. Coach Estelle, ninth year with the program, 137 wins, and it's the first time in program history that the Havelinas have made the tournament in back-to-back -back seasons. Out of the timeout, they get Sammy Brooks on the floor, and they'll throw it inside to Kevon Booker. He goes to work against Holt, and a strong move by Booker, but he can't finish. The rebound falling away and missing was Brooks, and the Buffaloes escape with the defensive stop. Here's Holt outside to Brown. Julius has an open lane, whips it back to Ryland. His three's too strong. Rebound pulled down by Payne. Approaching the 15-minute mark of the second, buffs up 48 to 32. Cam Bell reaches in, knocks the ball away, and they're going to call Bell with the foul. That's one that'll get the fans' ire because the official that made the call was the trailing official. May have had a better view, but he's not the one that fans think are watching the play.
Here's Avery. Brown slips down, grabs his ankle. We'll see if he gets up court okay. Appears to be good. Here come the buffs. Cross court to Tucson. Open three. Yes! We had Kavon Booker, who used to be a teammate of Zach's. He knows how good Zach can shoot it. He was flying across trying to get a hand in his face, and it was too late. Uh, you can't get there after Zach gets the ball. you got to be waiting for him. Oh. A strong drive and one by Isaiah Payne. A couple of times that Payne has gotten into the paint and hung in the air. Great finish. Foul goes against Ahmed Muhammad, his first. Buffs seventh as a team. Look at this here. You know, Ahmed goes up, Holt bumps into Ahmed and slams him into pain. Isaiah, or Ryland should at least get an assist on that <laughs> foul. Pain at the line, 75% on the year, knocks down the and one. Kingsville Kent has been better in this second half offensively, but they're still not, they have not been able to string together enough defensive stops. They have matched the buff scoring 10 points. But as you said, Lucas, they have not made stops, or when they've made stops, they haven't converted on the other end to take advantage. Here's Brown in the paint. Goes all the way in, reverse, no, but Larry Wise flies in for the follow. Down at the other end, Gooding with the wow. shot, no good, out of bounds. Last touch by the Havilinas. That, that's Rylan Holt again going up in the air, making sure he doesn't hack down and commit a foul, but his long arms right now at Kingsville, they're driving the paint, and they're, all they're seeing is Rylan Holt's arms. How do I get a shot off? 53-35 inside of 14 to play. Holt on top. Left wing, Tucson. Three, yes! That guy can get a shot off. He hit the game winner in the LSC championship game. And he's got a couple three-pointers tonight. Let's take a look at it. Just posts up out there and knocks it down. That'll take us to a timeout with 13.38 to play. Buffs up 56-35. You're watching NCAA South Central Region Men's Basketball Championship on NCAA.com. The NCAA sponsors 90 national championships each year, none of which could happen without officials. There's an urgent need for sports officials across the country as they are retiring four times faster than they are coming in leaving shortages at all levels of sport. The NCA recognizes the importance of officiating on the student athlete experience and is dedicated to the recruitment and retention of new officials for all sports. There are many great reasons to become an official. Stay in shape and get paid to do so. Meet new people and build relationships within a tight knit community. Give back to the sport you love by creating a fair atmosphere and upholding the integrity of the game. Say yes to officiating. Visit NCA.org slash Say yes to officiating for more information on how to get started. All right, out of this timeout, West Texas A&M leads 56-35. There's a look at Zach Toussaint, who has now made a couple of triples, so now has 296 made threes in his career. That is third all-time on the West Texas A&M three-point made list, only trailing Jordan Evans and David Chavovic, who sits on the bench now as assistant coach under Tom Brown and Chris Gove. Havilene's basketball, Payne drives. Guess who? Ryland Holt comes in and swats it away. It was there, and then it was gone. The shot attempt, and Holt comes out of nowhere. Look at this. Return All clean. to Cinder. Booker goes up high for the inbound. Gooding drives on Tucson. And we've got Yeah, there, there was contact there. The buff crowd doesn't like it, but there was contact as Dylan Gooding was driving to the bucket. Tucson picks up his second, eighth team foul. That'll send 
Gooding to the line, an 81 percenter on the year to shoot twice. Ryland Holt, five points, six rebounds, four assists, and a block. A lot of the Tucson crowd, Kent, as always, tuned in back in Johnsburg, Illinois, as they see Zach pick up that foul there and making his presence felt offensively in this second half for the Buffaloes. Gooding converts. 56-37 Buffaloes. Wise kicks it outside to Meshack. He was off balance when he caught the ball. Wise in the corner. Three, no good. That's, that's really good defense by Will Shayer against Larry Wise. Didn't let him get around and then contested that three. Driving hard, Sammy Brooks with the roll. Well, you said it throughout this game. If you're expecting the Javelinas to quit and put wave the white flag, yep. that's not going to happen. Doesn't happen. Holt open, pump fake, drives off the glass and in the bucket. Did the stretch from Ryland Holt. He'd be a great first baseman, Kent. Is he left-handed? <laughs> <laughs> and there's a steal. Bell got a hand on it. Wise came up with it. Tucson finishes it. And that's going to... Result in Johnny Estelle calling a timeout. His team made a small run. The Buffs then turned it around and went the other way. Watch this. The outlet. In Johnsburg, they're yelling, dunk it, Zach. <laughs> He'll take the layup. 12-17 to play. Buffs up 21. You're watching the NCAA South Central Men's Basketball Championship on LST Digital Network and NC. Being a champion takes more than skill more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. Our score... At the 12-17 mark here in the second half, West Texas A&M leads 60 to 39. You go back to the first half, the way this game started, the Buffs uh, got out of the gate slow. They trailed 13-8. At one point, Kent, they were 0 of 7 from the field, but they have picked it up. WT has really on both sides of the floor. Avelina's got some work to do now. Here's Payne. Pulls up, top of the key, drains it. Good shot. 11 points for Isaiah Payne. Buff sleep cut to 19. Here's Wise, 10 on the shot clock to Wallace. Shack in the corner, three won't go. Rebound pulled down by Booker. And remember, Kent, this run offensively that we're seeing from the Buffs as that shot is off the mark there. WT has went on the, uh, this run of late with Damian Thornton on the bench. He went to the bench with three fouls. WT has not skipped a beat. In the first half, the Buffs had a 14-0 run that stretched to 17-2. They've had a series of mini runs here in the second. Tucson rims out the three. Booker gets the rebound. It's his third. Down at the other end, Smith fouled on his way to the bucket. He'll go to the line. 
foul is called against Brock Meshack. His first team foul number nine against WT. One more game coming your way after this one wraps up. It's Angelo State against Colorado Mesa. The Mesa Mavericks co-champs in the RMAC regular season. And Angelo State runners up in last weekend's Lone Star Conference Tournament Final, which was a classic. Buffalo's won with a shot made with two seconds left by Zach Tucson. And it wasn't a three. Here's Brown on the wing. Goes baseline. Shot clock winds down to 10. Kicks it outside to Wise. Larry starts a drive, and he's going to be fouled. Let's see if Isaiah Payne is called. Yes, he is. It's his third, just the second team foul of the half against the Javelinas. That's a tough one there for Coach Estelle because the shot clock was down to six seconds. That's a smile of frustration on the sideline. Brown. Reverse dribble to Wallace in the corner. He's open. He takes it and he makes it. Well, and see, Kevon Booker is guarding him. The scouting report last year said let him take that shot. This year, not the case. That's his second three he's made tonight. Nine points for Wallace. Buff lead back to 20. Going in, Payne misses. But he's fouled. Some of the buff. So the WT fans trying to give a description of why that should not have been called a foul. Here's the replay, Kent. See? Good drive. Madison steps in, jumps up. You know. There's contact. You watch last night, for instance. The Texas TCU game. There were numerous plays where a defender would jump up in the air, make what would be forceful body contact, but there was no foul called because the jump was vertical. He was not extending at all. We don't necessarily see that call at this level. Oh, that's such a difficult <laughs> shot from Julius. He's, he's Julius. not even looking at the basket, but spins back and instantly eyes go to the rim and he knocks it down. There it is. Jones Green to Smith. Smith driving off the glass and in. Good bucket by C.J. Smith. Sometimes with Julius, I think, Kent, if you put a blindfold on him and say go out there and see if you can score 10 points, I think he could do it. Muhammad. Nice inlet to Larry. Gets Booker in the air. Booker blocks the shot. Kavon got beat on the play, but his reach allowed him to make the play. Buffs almost come up with a steal. Looking at the shooting percentages. It's warmed up for WT. They're shooting 46% from the field. Kingsville, 36%. And that's a huge difference here, KJ. 12 threes made by the Buffs as a three is put up and missed. Kingsville is just one for six from the perimeter. Booker goes over the back of Addison Wallace. Draws the foul, just his first. When you think about ingredients for winning, the recipe, so to speak, for winning in the postseason, defense, toughness, making your free throws, but the three-point basket is huge uh, in today's game. We saw it with Fort Lewis College. They were able to knock down 12 threes. Black Hill State, they got hot in the second half, made some threes. Buffs have done it here tonight. Larry misses the shot, and Shayer cleans up the rebound. The Javelinas push ahead. 
trailing by 20 points, 65 to 45. Here's Payne, pulls up. Yep, that's that's a foul. He Fouled hit him. outside. Buff bench calling for a flop. They're not going to get that call. No. I, I think it's, you know, the, watch the shooter, how he falls, but there's still contact made up top. I mean, it, it, does he sell it? Absolutely, which is. There wasn't it, that much force applied, but no. there was contact. Yes. yes. Sends Payne to the line. He'll shoot twice. Winner of this game will advance on tomorrow to take on the winner between our next game, Angelo State and Colorado Mesa. And that is your pivotal 4-5 oh, seed game. Earlier today, we had a six knock off a three. Coach Estelle is arguing that that was a three-pointer that and was attempted and there should be one more free throw. The officiating crew was adamant from the get-go that it was a two. Okay. Ryan Huber made the call. Buffs basketball leading by 18. Damian Thornton back on the floor here for the Buffaloes. He's rested. Wallace outside. Up top to Brown, eight minutes to play in the ball game. Buffs up 65-47. Wallace gonna drive, Ooh. kicks outside to a wide open. Brown misses. Was impressed with Addison's behind the back flip pass there. Singleton to Jones Green. Gooding drives, lays it up too hard. Wallace with the rebound. Missed opportunity there for Kingsville. The bunny inside. Mashat from Brown. Won't go. Big rebound. Singleton stolen away by Brown, and we got a reach foul on the floor. You may take it from me, but you're not going away from me. Foul's going to go against Allen Singleton, his second. Havelina's fourth. That'll take us to a timeout, 721, showing on the game clock. Buffs lead at 65-47. You're watching the NCAA South Central Region Men's Basketball Championship on NCAA.com. These are the moments that live on, that we'll talk about for years to come. We come here to see history made, sharing in the wins and the upsets. Together. Because whether we're players or fans, we're all on the same team. And to us, this is more than just a game. It's an important moment in our lives. One, one that's, that's worth protecting. protecting. So if you see something, say something. Report suspicious activity to your local authorities. As a pioneer in online education, West Texas A&M University leads the state and the nation in quality and value. Six of WT's graduate programs earned best program accolades from U.S. News & World Report. And WT's online undergraduate program was ranked number one in Texas and number 24 in the country. Two online degree programs for veterans were also ranked number one and number three in Texas. Get an outstanding education completely online at one of the most affordable and accessible institutions in the nation. Visit WTAMU.edu. Buffs lead at 65-47, 7-21 to play second half. And Buffs shooting 44% from the field, A&M Kingsville 35, but the Buffs have dropped in 12 of 30 three-pointers. Havelin is just one of six. Interestingly here, Lucas, A&M Kingsville has gone to the free throw line 17 times to just nine for WT. Yeah, for the That's kind of indicative of where the Havelina shots have come from. Yeah, and they've done they've done a good job. They've only missed five at the line, but again, the three pointer. They're one of six. Jones Green That's high it. off the glass. His first bucket of the game. The Havelinas have cut it back to 16. Buffs' largest lead was 22 at the 9.55 mark of this half.
Thornton draws the foul as he drives in. It's going to go against Marcus Jones Green. It's just hard to keep Damian from getting past you. You almost have to play off it, and then you say, well, does, is he going to make these outside shots? Because right here, quick step, and then he's bumped already. Thornton hits the first. Second shot still to come. Can't we start the day with 64 teams spread all across the country? And after tonight, that'll go down to 32. Cut them in half real quick. Thornton makes them both. 12 points for Damian. Underneath, Scher, off the glass, no good. Rebound and the putback. Yeah, he's playing strong tonight. Ten points, four rebounds. Now make it five rebounds and also two assists for Scher. Tucson, right wing to Muhammad. Right block, Thornton. Muhammad to Tucson, shot clock at eight. Brown says, I'll drive off the glass, won't go in. Rolled around the front of the rim and fell off. Singleton with a pull up. Okay, Kingsville making this comeback now. Buff's got to be careful. It's down to a 14 point lead. Largest lead was 22. have not scored a field goal in their last four minutes. Thank you, Addison Wallace. It's just really, for you and I, we've seen it over the last several seasons, but Addison Wallace, it's his improvement. You know, you say, well, I'm not a shooter. Well, you can improve. You can become one because he's made three threes tonight on the season, now getting closer to 20 made three-pointers, and he wouldn't. He was almost afraid to shoot two seasons ago. That wasn't his role. But the old take the shot has registered, and he has. And we're at a timeout with 5.20 to play. Buffs up 70 to 53. You're watching the South Central Region Men's Basketball Championship on NCAA.com. This one here today, first day of the NCAA tournament. The South Central region being hosted this year by West Texas A&M and the Buffaloes lead in the one versus eight matchup right now by 17 points over the Javelinas of Kingsville. Texas A&M Kingsville huddled up right there for the Javelinas. A solid, solid year, 21 wins, 11 losses. And Kent, you saw them in Frisco last weekend in that semifinals. They, they really battled tough against Angelo State and lost that game by just four points. Had some chances down the stretch. It didn't go their way. Yeah, I had the opportunity to win the game and, and couldn't do it. During the five-minute mark, buffs up 70 to 53. Majors inlet pass to share. A left-handed hook. No, Holt with the rebound. That's his seventh. Brown dribbles baseline, feeds Thornton, who couldn't hold on to it. Well, but once again, that pass was on the money. Down at the other end, Gooding with the driving layup. The Havelinas do a great job of getting into the paint, hanging, and then finding a way to float the ball up into the basket. Nicely done there by Gooding. Holt outside to Thornton and Tucson. Brown. to Tucson. Here's Larry Wise, shot clock at five. 
Tucson open three, yes. That, that's an incredibly patient possession there because Zach starts it off by racing into the paint but dishing it off. He runs all the way around, goes from left to right side of the floor and ends up making the three. And the number of touches the Buffs had before they got it to Tucson. Yeah, that is a beautiful basketball right there. Majors misses at the offensive end. Buffs get the rebound and have the basketball with under four minutes to play. And Kent, after that three made by Tucson, there are five Buffaloes in double figure scoring. Tucson, three again, short. Avery with the rebound. Hustles it up court. Holt stepped out, had the steal, couldn't hold on to the basketball. Sammy Brooks, right wing to Gooding. He'll take the three. No. Wise oh, with the oh. rebound. That was a emphatic rebound by Larry Wise. We've seen the Buffaloes, when they get this lead at the end of the game, spread you out. Eventually, they're going to try to have some dribble penetration. Deflected pass. Holt scoops it up with six on the shot clock. Wise at three. Drives, draws the foul. With one second on the shot clock. Oof, oof, oof. That'll take us to a timeout. 2.53 to play. Buffs lead it 73-55. We'll have free throws when we come back. You're watching South Central Region Men's Basketball Championship on NCAA.com. Number 32, Kyle Hornsby. Inside the 30. Touchdown. Michaela Burgess. An incredible finish by Hall. The NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. The NCAA expresses our gratitude to our corporate champions and partners. Without their support, these great championship moments and opportunities are not possible for our student athletes. The NCAA's commitment to the highest levels of fairness and well-being along with the pursuit of excellence in both academics and athletics, helps build a championship culture. With their generosity, our corporate partners make it possible to celebrate champions. Thank you. Our score, 73-55. Hope you are enjoying day one of the NCAA tournament, the South Central Region on the men's side, hosted by West Texas A&M. Lucas Kinsey alongside Kent Johnson. And uh, Kent, well, we texted this morning, and uh, you and I said, hey, we are excited. A full slate of basketball, and it doesn't get any better than this. Yeah. For uh, WT right now, trying to close this thing out up by 18 with under three minutes to play. And I'm still excited about this day. we got one more game to come. That's right. Here's Bell on the wing. Brown down low. Julius dribbles up on the wing. Shot clock at seven. Gets a screen from Holt, kicks it back out to Ryland. He'll put up the three, nothing but twine. And make that number 15 from downtown for the Buffaloes. And another player in double figure scoring in this game. Buffs don't have anyone that's setting the world on fire with points. What they have yeah. are six players with between 10 and 15 points. Larry Wise with 10, Wallace with 12, Thornton with 12, Toussaint 14, Ryland Holt with 10, Juju leads the way with 15. As we hit the two-minute mark, Buffs up 21. Brown with 10 on the clock, feeds Bell, who misses. Muhammad with a tap, he missed as well. Cameron hasn't scored tonight. Julius was ob obviously setting him up. Bell almost had a turnover there, or a steal, rather. Ends up getting called for a foul. You talk about Julius setting people up, Kent. How about Julius not only leading the way scoring with 15 points, he has seven assists tonight. Cameron just picked up his third personal team foul, number 10 against the Buffaloes. Isaiah Payne 
goes to the line, shooting twice. He's three of five this evening. Julius transferred over to West Texas A&M two seasons ago after playing for Lincoln Memorial and going up against the Buffs uh, at the Elite Eight, in the, actually in the Final Four. The Big crowd showing their appreciation as Zach Toussaint, Ryland Holt, and Julius Brown exit the ball game. Jesse Awezi, Journey Phillips, and Muhammad. And Ahmed Muhammad, who's already yep. appeared in the game, take the floor. I see Nick Jett taking off his shooting shirt, making his way to the scorer's table. Muhammad outside, buffs up 76-56. Muhammad drives in, shot was deflected, rebound controlled by Majors. And that's a name we haven't called nearly as much today as I thought we would. There's a long three, no good. Scher with the rebound, put back no good. Majors with the rebound. Majors has four points. And uh -huh. two boards. Yep. Muhammad takes it, goes down, lays it up gently and through the basket. Now that was smooth. He, he kind of lost the basketball for a second, but it dribbled right up into his hands in midair. Substitution timeout for the Buffaloes as Nick Jett takes to the floor, as well as Parker Nielsen. Parker missed the bulk of this season with an elbow injury, which resulted in surgery, but he came back down the stretch of the season, has played his way back into the lineup. Inside of a minute to go, buffs up 78-56. Share with the left-handed hook, no good. Meshack brings the buffs up court, shot clock is off. 20 seconds to go and the buffs are gonna go to 26 and six on the year. Texas A&M Kingsville's gonna fall to 21 and two as West Texas A&M is going to take a 78-56 win in the quarterfinals of the NCAA Men's Division II South Central Region Basketball Championship. They'll advance to the semifinals tomorrow night at 7 p.m. from the First United Bank Center, taking on the winner of Angelo State and Colorado Mesa. That game coming up at 7.30 this evening. We're gonna take a quick timeout We'll come back and wrap it up. Again, our final score, West Texas A&M 78, Texas A&M Kingsville 56. You're watching the South Central Region Men's Basketball Championship on NCAA.com. These are the moments that live on, that we'll talk about for years to come. We come here to see history made, sharing in the wins and the upsets together. Because whether we're players or fans, we're all on the same team. And, and to us, us, this is more than just a game. It's an important moment in our lives. One, one that's, that's worth protecting. protecting. So if you see something, say something. Report suspicious activity to your local authorities. The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. This is your ticket to the NCAA tournament. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. Number 32, Kyle Hornsby. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. The NCAA expresses our gratitude to our corporate champions and partners. Without their support, these great championship moments and opportunities are not possible for our student athletes. The NCAA's commitment to the highest levels of fairness and well-being 
along with the pursuit of excellence in both academics and athletics, helps build a championship culture. With their generosity, our corporate partners make it possible to celebrate champions. Thank you. Welcome back to the First United Bank Center. The West Texas A&M Buffaloes advance to the semifinal round with a 78-56 victory over Texas A&M Kingsville. Lucas Kinsey, we talked about the first half. The Buffs trailed 13-8, then went on the 17-2 run. Offensively, taking the lead, never relinquishing it, but defensively, they had some strong moments as well. They really did, Kent. You know, they rebounded well, especially early in the game, where they were getting a lot of offensive boards leading to second chance points. Uh, they, they did a good job of really closing off that dribble penetration early in the game from the Javelinas. And uh, for the Buffaloes, it was all about balance, both defensively and offensively. Every player that touched the floor tonight, I felt like made a big impact on this victory for WT. Take a look at the stats. The Bucks, Buffs shot 44% from the field, 28 of 63. Interestingly, they were 44% from three-point range as well, 15 of 34. Texas A&M Kingsville, 35% at 21 of 60, just one of nine. They didn't make many, but they didn't take many from the uh, three-point range. That's just 11%. A&M Kingsville, 13 of 19 from the free throw line. The Buffaloes were 7 of 11. Rebounds, the Buffs out rebound the Javelinas by a narrow margin, 40 to 38. And there really weren't a lot of turnovers. Each team with 11 turnovers in this ball game. Take a look at the individual statistics for Texas A&M Kingsville. Avery had four points, two rebounds. Payne had 14 points, one rebound. Brooks with two points and a game high 10 rebounds. Will Shear with 10 points, seven boards. Majors with four points, three rebounds. Smith with seven points, one rebound. Washington with two rebounds. Gooding with 11 points. Booker with three rebounds. Singleton, two points, one rebound. And Green Jones, two points, four rebounds. For the Buffaloes, Jesse Oweezy played the last minute, did not register statistics. Meshack, three points, two rebounds. Nielsen played two minutes, but did not register statistics, as did Nick Jett and Journey Phillips. Ahmed Muhammad, two points, one rebound. Julius Brown, 15 points, two boards, seven assists. Holt, 10 points, seven boards, five assists. Thornton with a double-double at 12 points, 10 rebounds. Tucson, 14 points, one rebound. Cameron Bell did not register points or rebounds. Addison Wallace, 12 points, five rebounds. And Larry Wise, 10 points, eight rebounds. Again, our final score, West Texas A&M wins it 78-56. They'll play tomorrow night at 7 p.m. against the winner of the upcoming Angelo State Colorado Mesa game. Our earlier winners today saw six seat Black Hill State defeat Colorado Mines 68-48 and then our number two seed Fort Lewis with an offensive display 97-65 over Lubbock Christian. We're going to take a break. We'll be back at 725 with pregame of Angelo State and Colorado Mines. Until then, thanks for watching. I'm Kent Johnson for my broadcast partner, Lucas Kinsey. You're watching.